If you look at our texts for today, they're quite interesting in the fact that they go back to times when things aren't so different from today. Habakkuk was dealing with violence and problems and struggles. It comes around and around and around, doesn't it? And our epistle text is dealing with some of those same kinds of problems. We read from 2 Timothy, the first chapter, beginning with the third verse. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love with our in Christ Jesus, that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Heavenly Father, your word is truth. Sanctify us in the truth. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If we looked purely at human standards, there's a lot of Christians that would be thinking to themselves, what in the world is going on in this world, Lord? Is it all that surprising that we read in the prophets? How long, Lord? How long? When are you going to come and do something about it? Stop the evil people. There's easily fear. And it fits our time just as much as it did in ancient times and in pre-Jesus times. It wears on us that so many places are failing, aren't they? People have lost their jobs. Businesses are closing. People are worried about money. They're frustrated. And sometimes they're even ashamed. The Apostle Paul deals with all of this in our text. Things didn't go the way Paul was expecting them to go. He was frustrated. Paul's in prison, again. Not being able to do what he wanted to do. Sounds kind of familiar in some ways, doesn't it? How many times haven't we just needed to get out of the house and even go for a drive or do something? Because it feels like we're in prison. Part of the frustration, part of the things that were hard on Paul was not knowing when or what was coming. He just had to wait till Caesar had time to see him and judge his case. 
with no timeline given. He wanted to travel to see Timothy and the others that he had preached to who were so dear to him. But he couldn't because he was in prison. And there's also that frustration that you get not feeling like you matter. Because of his prison situation, he was sitting and doing nothing or felt like he was doing nothing. Not doing the job he was called to do. Is that really so different from some of the things that we're seeing today? It sometimes feels like we're in prison. It's a nice prison, but it feels like we're stuck. People are worried about going anywhere, especially as the cases climb again. We're tempted to ask ourselves, could it get any worse? But then yet, it could probably get worse, couldn't it? One of the funniest things I saw this last week was people, you know, it said somebody in September 2020 was thinking that, how could it get any worse? And then they photoshopped the Death Star over the moon and said, this is what October is looking like. Not knowing when or how things are going to turn out. When is this going to be over? Is it ever going to be over? And it's easy to feel defeated. To worry about money, to be worried about failure. All of these things are normal things for human beings. Even those best years that we've looked back to in our lives, they weren't always perfect. And the Apostle Paul talks to Timothy here and he encourages the young Timothy to not lose his focus on Christ. You see, the whole issue is how do you look at it? If we look at things from an earthly standpoint, like how many numbers do we have in church with us during the pandemic? Or how much money is coming in? Or all the other earthly standards. We fail something. We fail our faith. We fail to trust in God. And there's really one, if you want to use that phrase, one more elephant in the room. We live in a world that's growing more and more hostile to God and the truth of life. In fact, the council, we're talking about it before church. Where does Paul go? He says, even though I suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Because he's also seen the word of God work and the power that it had. And he reminds Timothy of the gift of his mother and grandmother. How they raised him in the faith. And he points Timothy to the instruction that he received from Paul himself. And of course, he refers to and points Timothy to Jesus, his savior, conqueror, that there's an immortality awaiting us, no matter what happens here on earth. A place where things will be better, where there will be no more crying and gnashing of teeth and sweat and pain. Hold fast the teachings and the good thing committed to you by the Holy Spirit. 
You see, because God doesn't go by earthly standards. He has a purpose. And that's really the title of our sermon today, according to his own purpose. Why do we go through the things that we go through? Well, God reminds us, first of all, that this is not our home. We have a home that we're waiting for. And if this place were perfect, we would think, well, why would I care about going somewhere else? We also have to be reminded that who messed this place up in the first place? We did. Our ancestors did. God gave us a perfect world. Didn't last very long. And yet he still loved us. Wanting to be with us that he sent his own son to die for us. A friend of mine on Facebook posted something this last week. She was a woman, well, I think one of my first confirmands in my first congregation. And she's kept in touch with me through all the years. She posted that, you know, God still knows when you're going to die. And that hasn't changed because of the pandemic or anything else going on. He still has you in his hand. We need to remember that God is still in control. He allows evil. And again, it's not his fault. But he allows evil for his own purpose. We're in a different situation. Not everybody who is a member here can come to church right now because they're worried about their health, worried about getting other people that they live in close proximity to sick. Things have changed. But I also was warmed in my heart a week or two ago. One of the women who comes to church said, Pastor, I know my husband only comes for Christmas or if one of the girls has something going on in church, but I have to tell you, he's been watching your sermons when he can't sleep at night. The word is still doing things. It is still powerful. And it accomplishes the goal that God gave it for. We've been able to reach out to other people. Technology has allowed us even to preach to nations where we don't have a pastoral presence. Pastor Abramson and some of the pastors from our synod are even training a brand new group of people in Africa. In God's word. And they're doing it from their offices here in the United States. The word still is powerful. Is it easy to be tempted by earthly standards? Yeah. Is God still in charge? Get it. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, let that peace be with our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.